This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. One of the most important components of an Oracle database is the data dictionary. The data dictionary, which I'll refer to as just the dictionary from here on out, is a set of read-only objects that describe the database itself. The dictionary describes what tables are available, what views are there, what indexes have been created. The dictionary says what permissions have been granted and to whom. This data is called database metadata, and that means data about the database. Users are not allowed to update the dictionary directly. When you create a new object or run certain commands, Oracle updates the dictionary internally. Users are not allowed to update that because the dictionary is critical to the correct functioning of the database. Oracle uses the metadata to understand itself. It's very critical. Never try to update the data dictionary directly. You can be given permissions that will allow that, but don't even be tempted with it. The only time the dictionary is ever updated externally is when it's directed by Oracle support or when you're doing an upgrade. The dictionary has been exposed to users to query because it can be highly useful. If you're discovering a database, you can navigate all over via the dictionary. When you're troubleshooting, you'll use the dictionary then too. So on my screen, you have my SQL developer and a set of connections to the database. These connections are what I defined, but once I get connected, and I'm gonna choose my Lewis at PE to get connected. Once you're connected to the database, this is basically the data dictionary. SQL Developer is going out and querying the data dictionary and saying, show me what tables you have, show me what views you have, show me what indexes you have. And if you click on the plus, it actually pulls back from the data dictionary all these tables. If you click next to a table, it's actually pulling back the columns from a view in the data dictionary and you get information about it. You can see additional details from the data dictionary by clicking on the details tab. The data dictionary itself is owned by a super user called Sys. You can think of Sys kind of as the root user of the database. No one should ever connect as Sys, at least very rarely. You would get permissions that allow you to do the work that Sys can do, as Sys DBA, but you don't normally connect as Sys. So I'm going to show you if I go down to my users, other users, I'm going to click on the tab on the plus. I'm going to go down to my sys user, and in here I'm going to click on my views. So these are views that the sys user owns. There are three types of dictionary objects. The user views show everything that are owned by the user running the command. So I'll come scroll down to the users section. If you look at, say, user tables, and I'll click on that, I'm going to click on data so we can actually see the tables. This allows you to see the objects that are owned by me. I logged in as Lewis. I'm looking at the user tables view. I will see the objects that are owned by me. The all views, and I'm going to scroll up so we can look at all tables. All tables looks pretty much like the user tables, except it now has an owner column, so I know who owns the object. Remember, with user, I owned it. Under the all tables, this is all the tables that I can see, that I have some kind of access to. So you need to know who the owner is. In this case, I'm looking at a bunch of sys objects. If I scroll down, you see there are a lot of objects out there that are owned by sys that as a user I can see. And I'm actually a DBA, so I see more than just your basic user would. Then you also have the DBA views. And the DBA views show you everything in the database. You have to have permissions to the DBA views to see these. So I'll come down to DBA tables. And there are a lot of objects in the database. And this is DBA tables, just like all tables. But in this case, it's everything in the database, even if I don't have permissions to it. There's one more table I want to talk about that is a dictionary table. It's called dual. So the dual table is a special table in the dictionary. Everyone has access to the dual table, and the dual table is guaranteed to contain only a single row. There were previous versions of Oracle where it was actually possible to mess that up, but now it's kind of a special table and it's guaranteed to be one row. The column in the table is called dummy, and the value is x. So if I say select asterisk from dual, I get a column called dummy and the value x. 
what you do is you use this to retrieve single values from functions. Anything you need to run against a single row in a table. So as an example, select sysdate from dual. Sysdate is a function that returns the date. I could run this against a table and I would get the date for every row in the table, or I can run it against a special dual table and get just one row back. And you see I get the date. You can also do expressions. So if you had a mathematical expression, you want to see how much that value is, you select your expression from dual. Another function is the user function, and this just returns the currently logged in user. And I logged in as Lewis. One more example is a string function. You can operate on a string using a function and return the value. This is a init cap. It's just going to capitalize the first letter of each word. Let me see it capitalized each letter. So the data dictionary is stored in a special table space, and we'll talk about table spaces, called the system table space. Nothing should ever be created in the system table space except sysobjects. You never want to create your own tables in there. Only Oracle supplied database scripts will contain sysobjects. Much of the database is cached in memory. Anytime you read from disk, it'll be slower than reading from memory. So even a data dictionary would be slower if you had to access disk every time you did an action. Therefore, Oracle caches the most commonly used objects. If you have enough memory, it'll cache just about everything. The benefit of the cache, though, is by caching commonly referred to items.